section 9.1, Introduction to Hypothesis Testing, and we'll start with definitions and notation. So example one, the incubation period for chicken eggs is normally distributed, so that means we can use the normal curve, with a mean of 492 hours and a standard deviation of approximately 26 hours. Your friend wants to raise some chickens, so she purchased some fertilized eggs and has been incubating them for 583 hours. She's beginning to worry that her eggs are taking too long to hatch. Do you think your friend's eggs will hatch? So why am I confident that they won't hatch? So since we have the normal curve, I went ahead and drew it for you. And we put 492 in the middle, and then 583 we can't even see, right? It's past three standard deviations. So I went and found the z-score. Um, 583 minus the mean of 492 over 26, and I got a z-score of 3.5 which is way beyond two, so I'm pretty confident they won't hatch. But I'm gonna check out the probability. So we did normal, we would do normal CDF. 3.5 is my lower, infinity or 10 to the 99 is my upper, and we get 0 0.0002, which is 0.02%. And so because this percent is so small, it's so unlikely the eggs will hatch. Right, it's still possible right? There's a 0.02 chance. But because it's so unlikely that the eggs will hatch, I think our conclusion is that they probably won't hatch instead. So we're not com absolutely confident that they won't hatch, but because there is such a small chance that they will hatch, we're going to go ahead and make the conclusion that we they probably won't. So that's kind of the idea behind hypothesis testing. So let's... um. Get into some definitions and then we'll do hypothesis testing in a little bit. So before we get started, um, we really need a research question or a hypothesis. Um, for now, they'll only involve means or proportions, but there will be more later. So a hypothesis is a statement that something is true. Um, you might have seen this in a science class or even when you write an English paper, right? Your introduction is stating something and then you're proving it. Um, in statistics, we're going to have something special called the null or the initial. Hypothesis, we'll call it HO. Uh, this is the hypothesis to be tested or challenged. Um, this hypothesis sets a specific value for the population mean or proportion. So again, we'll split those up separately. Um, it's usually something that's claimed. Um, it might be an old value and we want to prove it's changed. Um, something comparable or default. So we'll see this shortly. And then the alternative hypothesis is the other one. We'll call this H1. This usually reflects the claim in the research question about the value of the parameter. So this is usually our research question. What are we trying to prove? Um, the hypothesis to be considered true if HO is false. So basically, like the eggs hatching, we're going to prove the eggs won't hatch to prove that they will hatch. Uh, so this is also the claim we are trying to prove. That's probably the most important part. And this claim never includes the possibility of equality. Because it's basically impossible to prove that something's equal, um, but we can prove greater thans or less thans. So let's look at some hypothesis. Um, so we have everything in regular language and language and we'll convert it to statistics. So here's my research question. Is the average course load for community college students less than 12 semester hours? And so I'm going to convert this to a hi statistics hypothesis. So I think we're talking about average. So that means it's a claim about the population mean. So that means our hypothesis will involve mu. Um, the question contains information about the population, right, all community college students. The variable would be semester hours, right, and the parameter would be the population mean. Um, and then what else? The claim is that the mean course load for all community college students is less than 12 hours. That's what we want to prove. So that'll be my H1. We're going to say mu is less than 12, what we want to prove. So we just converted all that language into a very short math notation. And then our HL will just say, hey, the mean is equal to 12. So if we can prove that it's not equal to 12, then maybe we can prove that it's less than 12. 
So the next one, do the majority, here's my research question, do the majority of community college students qualify for federal <clears throat> student loans? So majority makes me think more of percents because it would have, majority would be 50%, at least 50%. So there's nothing about an average. So this question contains a claim about the population proportion. Um, and let's see, the population would again be all community college students. The variable is, do they qualify for a federal student loan? So that's a yes or a no. The hint that it's categorical and we use proportions. And so the claim is that the proportion of community college students who qualify is greater than 0.5. And again, because majority would be 50%. So our hypothesis is P, because we're talking about proportions. We want to prove more than 0.5, so that's H1. And then HO will always just be equal. So if we can prove that it's not equal to 0.5, then maybe we can prove that it's greater than. So a few notes, I already said this, but HO always has an equal sign. To decide on the symbol for H1, we want to look for words that indicate something alternative to equal. So like greater than, less than. Um, and then what's going to be important when we start drawing the normal curve is if it's left tailed will be less than, right tailed will be greater than, and two tailed will be not equal, which we haven't seen yet. And that'll be the symbol in H1. So that's how we'll sketch the normal curve when we get there. So let's check out example two. So the price of snowboarding equipment generally falls dramatically as the season comes to a close. During January of 2008, the average price, I see the word average, which means we're probably in mean land, which means no proportions we're using mu. The average price for a new pair of snowboard binding, bindings was $138, and then a snowboarder stat student wants to conduct a study to see if the average price of such bindings in April of 2008 has fallen below 1000 So that sounds like a hypothesis to me. That's a claim. So what do we want to prove? We want to prove fallen below, so we want to prove mu is less than 100 so I like to write H1 first, what we want to prove. And then HO, ignore everything else. It's not 138. It's just equal to that same number. So if we can disprove that it equals 100, then we'll be able to prove that it's less than 100. So then since this is a less than, is it left-tailed, right-tailed, or two-tailed? So this would be left-tailed. So when we do get into drawing the normal curve a little bit later, it just means we're going to be looking at the left side for less than. All right, so let's assume sigma of x bar is 2.87, uh, and we get a sample that says x bar is equal to 97.82. So that's a little bit less than 100, right? So the question is, is 97.82 weak or strong evidence? Explain. So the idea here is my sample had an average of 97 and 82 cents. Is that less than 100 or could it just be random? So sure, it's less than 100, but is it just a little bit less and it's just random? And that's the z-score will tell us. So we've been doing this idea all semester. So we'll do 97.82 and we'll take away 100 divided by 2.87 and go ahead and calculate a z-score. I get negative 0 0.760. So because it's within two standard deviations, it could just be random. Right, if the average is 100, you might have a couple samples that are a little under and a couple samples that are a little over. That doesn't prove that the average is less than 100. It could just be random, so we call this weak evidence. Strong evidence needs to be way more convincing that it's less than 100. So same idea, assuming that sigma of x bar is 2.87, what if instead my average, my sample has x bar of 85.30? So to me, that sounds stronger. $85 is significantly less than 100 compared to 97. So let's actually check the z-score to see if we're more convinced that the true average is less than 100. So we'll do 85.30 minus 100 
divide by 2.87 and go ahead and find a z-score. I get negative 0.5122, so I'm definitely more convinced. It's way beyond two standard deviations. So this is strong evidence, right? This is way different than 100. So that's basically the main idea. Two is my cutoff. If it's only a little bit different, it might not actually be different. It might just be random. But if it's a lot different, then I'm more convinced. And so my final example for this part is, again, assuming sigma is 2.87, how about 112? So let's find the z-score. 112 and 33 cents minus 100 over 2.87. And then we're going to decide, is it weak or strong evidence? So go ahead and find the z-score. I get 4.296, which feels like strong evidence, right? It's more than two. Um, but it's not strong evidence. And why is that? What were we trying to prove? So even though it's more than two standard deviations, it's actually very, very weak evidence because we were trying to prove less than 100. And this actually proves more than 100. So it's proving basically the opposite of what we want. So it's actually very weak evidence. It proves the opposite. So this chapter is going to feel a little weird in the beginning, but once we actually do a hypothesis test, it'll all piece together and start to make more sense. We're just getting used to the ideas behind it.